Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers. This is take two. Hopefully um, take one worked okay. I seem to have a little bit of a um, funny Wi-Fi connection today. Um, I can see that the, the connection is not as good as usual. So if, it, if, if I'm lagging a bit, then let me know and I try and um, bring the data down a little bit that I'm trying to stream up into the cloud somewhere up there and then come down all the way to your TV or screen or whatever you're watching. So you're joining me today on the 2nd of February for a live stream of how to make um, a mini me. And uh, they're tiny dolls all lined up there as well. And um, the idea is that you make a person that you know or maybe that you have known and um, and we have a competition for you as well. So I'll tell you all about this in a, in a short and um, I'm gonna check in who's here today. Let's have a look. Um, we've got Diane and Sandra and Claire and Ava, Jude, hello, and Carol and Julie and, um, sorry, I'm pronouncing Eva the German way. I hope that's okay, Eva. You might be an Eva, so I do apologize. Okay, I'm just going to change some, something here in the settings um, and um, hopefully that will help the quality of the of you viewing it at the at your end so just bear with me yes I don't know some it's just it, it's looking better at my end but I don't know if it's looking better at your end I do apologize um, we've got Diana here and Erica and Denise Donna hello and Kim Carol Dawn Karen did I say that already Gina um, well there's two Karens so if I mentioned both of you in one go then um, maybe that's okay and oh we've got somebody new um louis louisa lass louisa lass sorry this takes me a while to work this out natasha is there hello and um of course emma is at the other side helping with all the links and answering any questions if you're watching the live comments if you are commenting on there as well by the way if you ever wonder that you can't comment you can only comment on a live stream if you actually have got a youtube account and you can set up an account really easy um, as long as you've got a google account you can link that straight to your youtube account so that should not be a problem um catherine is there and alex kim pam Right, I'm going to just double check my connection here and while I'm doing that I'm going to leave you with the competition um, sign and so you can read for yourself what this competition is about that we're running till the end of the month. So you've got a mini me competition, uh, you are making a particular uh, person that you know, that you're familiar with, that um, you want to copy, maybe you're making that person for for that person, maybe you're just making it for yourself, maybe you're making that person for somebody else. And um, in any case, you can choose that person and I will help you make that, um, that mini-me over two sessions. I actually made a little mini-me of uh, Stuart Hillard, which you can see on there. If you don't know Stuart Hillard, he is a, a renowned sewer. He's been featured on The Sewing Bee and on um, Kirsty's Christmas, Handmade Christmas. And uh, you've got until the 28th of February to send to us a photo of you, no, not of you, unless you make yourself, of your mini-me and of the person who it is supposed to be. Now, this could be somebody in your family or somebody who you, I don't know, just somebody who you um, have as an idol. It doesn't have to be, a, uh, certainly not a celebrity, but you can um, make anybody in your family, maybe just for fun. Maybe you know somebody and you're making each other. Um, it's 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 just to have a bit of fun on a maybe otherwise gloomy, in an otherwise gloomy February when um, it's not quite spring, it's a bit wintry and um, we're, we're trying to um, just lighten things up a little bit. So the uh, competition you have to enter um, on Facebook and we're obviously making that um, as a post and then you can just put your picture underneath that post. So if you are um, already a makers groupie, you know absolutely that we have got a Facebook page called Everyone a Maker and um, you can join this. Um, we just ask you to answer three questions. They don't hurt. So just answer them. Otherwise, we can't let you in. And um, and they're not bad questions, I promise you. And then you can uh, join this competition with us 
and I can't wait to see. I'm actually going to make a mini me of my mum. Now my mum sadly passed away um, five years ago. So, and I'm going to make her when she was young. So I, I, um, I just have such fond memories of when she was um, young and when I was young, and um, in the 70s that is. So I'm going to make um, a young mini me of my mum. God, lots of M's in there. So it'd be interesting. So um, come and um, definitely um, submit your competition picture on the main makers page, but you can still share our Everyone Who Makers group because that there's going to be all the chatter going on. So the competition on the main makers page and, and um, everything else you want to share with us, come to um, the, um, the Everyone Who Maker group. Right. Okay, let's get started. So First of all, these mini dolls, they're basic doll's house dolls. So if you're not interested in making a mini me, you might want to turn out a whole lot of um, doll's house dolls. And um, for this, we have got two uh, main pro products in our on our website. And one is the small and one is the large doll um, doll's house starter pack. This one is the small. And I'm just going to show you because this is basically what you need to make these... Um, these, oh, not that one. Sorry, sorry. Oh, I'm now in my own pickle. Okay, this one. This is, we haven't ended yet. We're, I'm still here. Sorry about this. So basically, you, um, what you need to make these mini dolls, you need some. You need a pipe cleaner. Um, at the most, you need two. Um, you at least need one, depending on if you're giving your doll standing legs or if you're hiding legs under a skirt or dress. You definitely need some wool for the head and the stuffing. Now, this is our um, core, standard core and stuffing wool, but our luxury um, organic um, core works really well too, and it's 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 really, really soft. You um, potentially need little shoes if you um, if you're giving your little doll feet like that, um, then this is this is something that would probably work quite well. Um, but it is not necessary. You could also make them from um, silk clay yourself, or maybe you've got other uh, versions of, of shoes. You need some embroidery thread. If you are embroidering the face, if you are needle felting it, then you just need uh, the same similar color, wispy, tiny, tiny wispies of needle felting um, wool. You need some extra strong thread. Now that is really important. Um, and you need potentially some of this cotton gauze um, this is 1.5 centimeters, and it helps if you're making the head in the Waldorf doll style, which I'm going to show you. But I'll show you both heads. Then this is really useful. If you're needle felting the head, you might not, uh, you won't need this. Hair selection. Got um, a few colors in this small. This is the small starter pack for the doll's house. So there's a variety of um, of yarns, hand dyed um, curls, and some um, wool tops. So. Even if you just have like little bits of, of um, sort of wispy fibers and wool knocking about, they often double up quite well as um, hair. And then you need some um, stockinette fabric, and that is quite important. So in this uh, small starter pack, you just get two colors. But if you want to have a look into the big starter pack, you get... Um, you get four colors here. You also get more wool for stuffing. You get more hair color choice. You get more pipe cleaners and um, these felt pieces that you can see here, they're for dressing your dolls. So you've got um, a larger choice on there as well. So both of those starter packs are available at our website. If you can't be bothered to um, collect little bits and pieces here and there and everywhere, then um, this is a really good way of starting out a whole family of dolls house dolls you won't need all of this just to make one doll it actually takes surprisingly um little materials so let's have a look a little bit closer at this little doll so she's um she has got a nose can you see it so you um, you can also keep the face flat. This one here has got a embroidered face, and um, she's got little the little shoes on. Her arms are poseable, so they they are, they've got the pipe cleaner inside, and so are her legs. So she can actually sit down um, if you want to put her on a chair or anything like that. So that's basically um, sort of how the dolls will end up looking. You have a choice also to make a doll that has got a um, that wears a um, a skirt like this one here, 
or even a dress. And for this, you only need one length of pipe cleaner then, and you don't need the little wooden shoes or any kind of shoes um, you won't need for these. So I'm going to start by um, first of all telling you what the competition price is today. And oh yes, and I should also say, oh, getting all muddled up. Okay, I'm just going to go back to the main competition because we've got two competitions. One is just for today and the main competition. And the main competition, I'm just going back here. So this is our main page, our main, the makers Facebook page. Um, as you can see here, facebook.com and then forward slash the makers with two ss.co.uk. That is our um, Facebook handle. And if you enter the competition, you can win yourself the um, Making Soft Dolls book signed by myself and a £15 voucher for our shop. So this is basically the competition that is on until um, the end of February. Now today's competition is, um, is, is the question that um, we're asking you is, who are you making and why? That's the question. Okay, so all of our competition, whether you've been here before or not, they are not, we don't, we don't go around and say, oh, that's the best answer ever. You deserve first prize. We don't do that. We, we, we just want you to comment who you're making and why. And then we go random, um, run by random selection. We pick you as a winner. Um, so that's basically what the makers are like. We never actually go around judging anybody's work because everybody has got brilliant ideas and makes amazing things. But up for grabs today is something special because this weekend we've had a our um, weekend hug, as we call it, which is our first online retreat that we've run to make a large valley black face lamb. I'll show you what, what that looks like later as well. And um, as, as part of this, we always, or well, normally people card their own butts, but this weekend it was all down to me, which I love. So there are two butts up for grab. These are hand carded by myself with my favorite colors and fibers. So in this one, actually, I'm just gonna go on the overhead camera because it does do it better justice. So whoever wins today, which is um, the live stream on Tuesday, gets, um, this lush pink, orange, yellow mix with a little bit of sari silk running through it. That adds a, just another dimension to it. Or, um, and these are the, both of them are for today, um, a blue green mix with a little bit of um, pink running through it. So these are for today, which is um, the Tuesday, 2nd of February, 2021 um, winner of the question, why are you making, uh, who are you making as a mini me and why? Now, if you're watching this on Thursday, Thursday, we always restream our, um, our live streams from Tuesday. And if you're watching this on Thursday, then you win these two. So you've got a beautiful bluish turquoisey color here with um, a little bit of purple running through it and some white spots in there. Um, this one's got, and they've both got a bit of um, sparkle in there as well. And that's a pink one with a little bit of purple and yellow through it too. So if you are watching this on Thursday at our repeat um, on our Facebook page, um, the makers, then you win these two. So this is Thursday's prize and the other two I just showed you, they are Tuesday's prize. So fire away with your um, answers to our question, which is who are you making and why? Um, I feel I've just moved my screen a bit. I don't know if I can move this back, but hopefully, oh, what have I done? Okay, it's, it's let me lose on the mouse and um, things run havoc. Okay, let's start. So basically what you need first of all is a pipe cleaner. There, got one here, right, handy. And uh, you need some wool. Um, as I said earlier, you can use our basic core um, stuffing wool or you can also use for just for the head you can use our lanolin rich core wool which is another favorite so there are three types of wool which work ideally one is the lanolin rich the other one is the um, standard core or luxury organic core wool so all three of them work and I'm going to go overhead because we're going to start this project rolling now so you've got your pipe cleaner here. Um, and I should also just show you maybe the book um, while you're sitting there. This book is almost a year old now. And um, it was it's, it's made me actually very sad because it came out during lockdown. And so we haven't really had much chance to, um, to, to sort of get a lot of exposure with the book. I haven't actually spoken to anybody about this book in person. Um, but all the books are signed. Um, 
if you buy them from us, all the books are signed. And if you happen to win the book and the £15 voucher, which is at the end of this month for the competition, then you um, you get a signed copy as well, obviously. The Dolls House dolls are actually in the back of the book. And these are the two types of heads that I'm going to show you how to make them now. So one is um, the featured head, which um, means that you wrap the wool around it, you add the cotton gauze over it, you can tie the eye line if you wish, and um, even add a nose, and then you fit it with, uh, fit over it with the stockinette skin fabric. And uh, then you can, um, you can either sew the face on or you can needle felt it. So there's, um, there's that. That's the needle felting on the outside. You can also make a needle felted head from, from the outset where you make your wool ball on top of the pipe cleaner and then you start needle felting the features onto the, the wool itself. And for that, you don't need the cotton gauze. You literally just put the stockinette um, that you've sewn into a tube over the top and then you have made um, another variety of the head. So I'm gonna show you both of these heads today. And, um, and that is my plan basically. So first of all, you take your preferred core wool, whichever one that is, and um, you need to hook the, um, actually you don't need to hook that, that's a different uh, method, I'm getting confused now, you're just going to wrap um, a tiny, tiny layer on the back of a pipe cleaner. I was thinking about fairies now, there's so many ways of making figures, and once you've wrapped the end, you're just going to, then you're going to hook your pipe cleaner down, so it traps the wool now, and you've got rid of a sharp edge. Um, end of a pipe cleaner. Now these um, these dolls, there's nothing stopping you um, making these as a as a toy for somebody if if you wish. There's there shouldn't be any um, sort of harmful items in there. But of course that's your judgment. We don't um, we don't sell our material um, as as doll as um, uh, as toy making material. So you're gonna wrap the wool around the head here and. Add some more layers. There we go. And once you've done sort of a um, a nice nice neat wrap, then you're gonna need your felting pad. I'm using our earth mat here, and you need to felt this wool down a little bit so that it doesn't sort of pop off the end of the pipe cleaner. There we go. And um, I'm gonna tuck it in underneath as well so I'm holding onto the pipe cleaner just tuck that in underneath turn that round and once you've established the wool on there you can start adding features now the features that you're adding they need to be quite exaggerated and the reason why they need to be exaggerated is because when you add the stocky net over the top it um it becomes it 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 adds another layer and it really distorts the the features quite a lot or distorts it it sort of it reduces the appearance of the features so even when you add when you make features on a on a head like this if you if you're needle felting it which is the head that I'm starting with you you need to sort of be a little bit more um exaggerating so take a little bit of wool to make a nose you can roll this up in your fingers and then you can just add it to the face and stab it in. It doesn't matter what it um, what the joint looks like. So because you're you're putting a stocky net piece over the top, it doesn't really matter what it looks like. So at the moment it's got a, a big almighty nose. And I'm just going to talk quickly about the stocky net because you might not have come across this uh, type of jersey. So this is a skin colored jersey fabric. The one that I'm holding here right now is of a heavy quality and the heavy quality means that it has got a smooth, um, it's smooth on this side. I'm trying to block out the camera so all you can see is this. And then on the other side, it's like a, a wrong side, like a, a garter stitch type back. So this is what the heavy quality is like. The difference between the heavy and the light is that the heavy is far less stretchy and it's slightly thicker. If you are using, if you're using the um, lightweight, then you will find that the lightweight, this is by the way, what you get, all of this is what you get if you buy one um, of our um, fat quarters, which is 70 by 50 centimeters. So this is the lightweight and it's got, it hasn't got a wrong and a right side. It has just, it looks the same on both sides and it's a lot more stretchy. You can see how much stretchier that is. So the reason why you're adding 
um, a, a great big nose and I would say make the head about, I don't know, about four to five centimeters, no bigger. Um, the reason why you're adding a great big nose is if you imagine this is going over the top, suddenly the features become a lot less um, strong. So you've got a nose here, but at the same time, um, you know, it doesn't look quite as, as big as you imagine it to look. So stick stick with that. The nose will definitely have to go into the center of the face. I just realized that mine was a bit too high up. And you can, of course, felt it down. Um, keep trying to stretch the stockinette over the top, and that definitely gives you an idea of... Um, of, of what the features will look like when, you, when you're when you done. Um, if you're shrinking the head down whilst you're doing this, you can always add a little bit more wool over the top. And then you can um, make sort of slight indentations on either side of the nose for the eyes. So um, if you work if you if you work that um, um, head quite solidly, you you it's better than it being squishy, and then you can um, also add um, features for the mouth. Now just putting an indentation there is not gonna um, really do anything much. So what I would do is just roll up a little bit of wool and add that for a mouth, and then later on when you're decorating the face from the outside of the stocking that you whether you're needle felting or whether you are sewing a mouth on, you can sort of distinguish between the two lips there. And that's um, basically um, showing you how how exaggerated you're putting the features on. Now I did want to show you um, what I'm actually making. So I'm making at the moment, that's what I'm aiming for, it's not a great quality of photo because um, it, it was it's a photo of a photo and then it's been um, printed out. But this is a photo of my mum. Haha. <laughs> As you can um, maybe guess, this is me, and um, and this is my sister. And um, if you, if I don't know if you can see this, but this outfit my mother crocheted. So my mother's always, I always saw her with knitting needles and crochet a crochet hook. So I'm actually later in the part two. I'm very excited, but I'm going to give her knitting needles and uh, and a little tiny knitted uh, garment. Um, so this was my mum. I probably um, just because I lost a tooth is no giveaway of my age because I I lost that tooth going down. Um, some stairs on a tricycle when I was three years old so I guess that I um I maybe I was four or five so gosh how old does that make my mum um well she was definitely not 30 put it that way my mum was very young when she had me so she would have probably been in her late 20s maybe maybe mid 20s even right um just gonna go for a minute to the front so this is what I'm aiming for at this stage there's probably not much that you can do unless you are an artist and uh, you're used to making figures like this so it's 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 a little bit more like um just get the features done if you're making a person and you know they've got a ginormous nose then this might be a good um a good thing to do but at the moment I'm just trying to make quite a plain normal face and um, what makes the mini me's mini me's is probably in the accessorization the color of the hair the color of the eyes maybe the their their posture maybe you give them some some things like I'm going to give my mum some knitting needles and a little knitted, knitted garment so I'm going to make it really tiny with little wires I'm going to work that um, out but if you if you're making somebody who always reads a newspaper or somebody with glasses then that is a feature to add and that you can already think about that maybe it's somebody with a beard maybe it's somebody with amazing hair um, maybe it's somebody who um, I don't know always wears really colorful clothes maybe um, somebody who um, I don't know, whatever, always carries something around or loves doing one thing or another, has a particular hobby, then this is basically where you can um, where you can make them look more that way. It's not going to be a complete uh, portrait of that person. I just thought I should set um, set some expectations here, but but it's going to be great fun because your creativity and your imagination can just go completely crazy and bonkers. So let's have a quick look at what people, who people are making and why. And um, we have got here, oh my goodness, so many comments already. So I've got to, um, got to be, <laughs> I've got to find first of all where I was. Um, yes, yeah, sorry, I was a bit late with the live. It's um, slight teething problems. Uh, <laughs> I 
Erica said, where's Steffi catching an owl? No, I was catching myself, trying to not have a technical moment. Um, is the, I hope the quality is a little bit better now. It does, still doesn't seem to be wonderful here at my end, but um, I don't I have no idea why that is. Oh, Pam is here today. It's not bad at all. A little freezing, but it's life. I can live with that. Oh, good. Thank you, Pam. Um, so, uh, <laughs> well, I had the same thought there, Donna. Donna says, Diana, um, it is freezing as it is very cold. Um, sorry, couldn't help. I couldn't resist that. I, I did just have the same thought. Right, so we've got um, uh, I don't know, somebody coming up with any ideas. Um, uh, what do oh, Karen says, oh, those are very cute. I never thought I'd want to make one, but now I do. There you go, Karen. We've got you finally convinced to do one. Um, Mavis says, oh, Mavis, because she's she goes out in all weathers, um, to shop for me because I'm shielding. Oh, that's so nice, making a special mini-me of a person who's extra helpful and um, who you just want to maybe give a little gesture to. Remember, it's Valentine's Day on the 14th, so you might be um, getting that done by then. Thinking I'd like to make my husband. He has plenty of character. Great, great job, Karen, great job. Uh, Kim says, I'm making my mum, and it's her birthday on the 28th of February. She will be 81. Oh, that's amazing. Um, Eva says, I'm going to make one of myself just because it's called Mini Me Doll. <laughs> yeah, I hadn't thought of making one of myself. Um, Claire says, I want to make my dad. He would have been 100 last November, but he's not with us anymore. Wow, that is a, um, a good old age, that is. Karen says, I'm going to make my grandson, um, Reggie, who I haven't seen for months. Making his favourite Spider-Man splash suit is going to be challenging. Wow, are you putting that Spider-Man splash suit onto the mini doll? Well, you definitely have to share that with us. Um, uh, Catherine says, so I wanted to do her in her uniform. Oh, we've done a whole uh, little live stream already on on um, key workers um, in, in the NHS. So you might want to uh, scroll back to last year and have a look. We we did we did them with a mouse shields and with a with the scrubs and everything. So um, you can you can definitely look at that as well, um, um, Karen. And um, no, that wasn't Karen. That was Catherine. And Diana says, I shall decide who I'm making when my doll tells me who she or, or he is. Penny says, I will make my grandmother. I was brought up by her my first years and she's very special for me. Oh, I'm, I'm so, I'm feeling so happy that you're making very special mini-me's. Um, Faith says, I'm going to make one of my cheeky little boy, I'm going to make my, one of my little cheeky boy Kenzie, as he always makes me giggle and making one of him now. I will keep him as he is right now. Ah, oh, that's so nice. It's a, it's a memory forever. My doll will be who I think it looks like when I get there. Okay, well, I was going to make a mini me, but a mini me, says Natasha, but I thought I'd make a mini Emma of the makers because she has rainbow hair and I want to make a doll with rainbow hair. Oh, Emma, that's so nice. Oh, going to have a mini me of you. You're going to have to dye your hair rainbow again. I'm going to make a mini me of my mum. She's amazing. Oh, my goodness. There's so many comments. I can't read them all because I'd be sitting here reading all of them. Um, I'd like to make my mum and dad. Um... Uh, I think I will make my dad. He would have been 80 March 10th this year. We lost him to cancer in 2017. I miss him so much. Um, oh, that's such a nice thing to do, Carol. Claire says I need to make a flat cup. We'll put my felting skills to the test for sure. However, there is a flat cup in, in my book um, as well. So you could just sew one from felt. Um, I think I think it's a flat cup. Is that what I'm thinking? Might get something muddled up in translation. But you, uh, felting is fine, of course. Yes, you don't need, you don't need to. Is that a flat cup? That one. That, there. Can you see that? Well, in any case, I'm sure you're making an amazing cup. Right. Let's keep going with um, that um, with the sculpting of this little head. Before that, I thought I should show you that we've got some amazing. Um, different colors of skin so if you if you need to um, decide 
on any color skin, the choice will be hard for you because we've got lots of them. And then also color hair. And this is the doll's hair that also works for the large dolls as you've be maybe been seeing them sitting around here. But of course, with the little dolls, you could also just use felting wool or little snippets of yarn or anything you've got in the house. But these are basically the colors. So we, the, all of the wool, um, sorry, all of the um, fabric um, pieces that you can see here, they all come in, in the light and in the heavy, um, in the heavy uh, quality, and uh, if you if you um, need to choose on the doll's hair, lots of you have recently seen how we're using the boucle not just for doll's hair but also for um, for adding curls onto sheep, um, hair onto fairies, and um, you could even use it uh, what I call poodle yarn. So if you're making a poodle and you need it, um, or maybe a, a labradoodle. Um, yeah, a labradoodle or um, a, um, um, a labradoodle or a cockapoo, that's what I'm thinking of, then you could be using these um, types of wools as well. And they come as the curly curly bits and they come as straight bits as well. I'm going to use the straight bits for my mum's hair and I think I'm going to go for that blondish hair there uh, down um, right in the far um, right hand corner and then you've got all these different skin colors there as well so that is something that you can choose to um, you can choose the skin color as well um, right I'm going to go onto the overhead camera now without trying to choose the wrong bit and I'm going to work more on that head now so I'm needle felting still the shape of the head that goes under the stockinette for this particular head I don't need um, the um, the cotton gauze and all, all I'm going to do is I keep checking with um, what what my the head might look like at the moment so getting an idea for it so I think I'm gonna have to felt that nose down a bit more I think my mum's got quite a round face so I'm gonna give her some cheeks I'm gonna felt that nose in a little bit more she's had she 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 had quite a small nose so nothing too extreme there um, the nice thing about using the stocky net um, on on dolls and faces is that as you probably most of you know it's really hard to needle felt a face so if you if you can um, make it with um, with a stocky net cover it just takes care of all the sort of um, unsightful needle felted bits I'm just making the head a little bit rounder so I'm adding a bit of wool on the side you might do other things to the head you might um, give it a very distinct forehead so you're just adding these pieces of, of, of um, these little batches of wool onto the area where it's required and don't worry about what it might look like underneath just keep checking with your um, piece of stocky net just keep checking in what it looks like when you stretch it and it will be a really taut stretch so it's not going to be um, just a little you know it will be really taut so the stretch when you put it over it needs to be sideways so if this is your head then you need to stretch it sideways and you get you begin to get an idea what that head could look like so there's the nose that's the mouth it's a bit wonky so I'm going to even that out the eyes are beginning to come through I still think it needs to be a little bit rounder so I'm going to adjust that so keep checking the stocky net piece that you're going to use add that over the top and um, and then felt it down um, accordingly it is definitely easier to make um, a face that has got sort of lots of features so as you're felting into the head it will also reduce the size so keep um, adding um, wool to it to keep it nice and round so that you don't end up with a flat head so just to add um, wool to it just lay little batches little watts on top of each other and felt them down and then see where you are um, once you've done that so you um, the idea is that the eyes are in the center of the head so make sure you um, you do that and um, we're often tempted to put them further towards the top of the head but it, it really does pay off to just keep them in the center because um, we have got quite a large forehead even though it might be hidden under hair um, 
that the book that um, is nearly a year old now doesn't just make um, dolls house dolls it also makes uh, larger dolls which brings me to the last two weeks in February where I will be showing you how to make large dolls heads in different um, styles there's more options than just for the small dolls and also um, how to fasten on hair so it's quite they're quite the two technically more technical um, live streams and I'm really looking forward to them because doll making is quite I feel quite passionate about doll making because I feel doll making is not just to make a doll for children doll making has got very powerful um, meanings to all kinds of people I I, uh, I never forget the stories that people have told me um, because I've been helping um, people to make dolls for many many years um, I've had some very powerful stories told of people who've lost um, babies and they made a doll in well just as part of the healing process I've I've uh, known a lady who um, goes to prison to be with young uh, women offenders who had their babies taken away from them and they make a little symbolic doll which they treasure in their pockets very sad stories um, at times but also very happy stories I've I've heard of people who have made um, dolls because they've got body image um, issues and some of these dolls they're, they're, they're not they're not Barbie dolls they really don't have um, you know sort of I idealized body shapes they're just lovely and squishy the larger dolls that you can play with lovely and squishy with lumps and bumps just like real people and so um, it that's something else but then of course you know people do make dolls for children as well so having talked about how my how you can make a nose really big now i feel that i need to shrink this nose thinking that i'm doing it my mom she really didn't have a big nose so um let's see what what she looks like now quite a round face and put that stretch that fabric over the top again ah that's getting there that looks looks a bit better now so um when you when you add the eyes later that will sort of bring more of an indentation in there as well but i'm going to leave leave it as that now um and i'm going to um start cutting my fabric piece to um to the right size now now it's really really important that when you use your um, whether you use the light, the lightweight or the heavyweight, that your stretch goes from side to side. You really so when you hold it over the face, you want that stretch to be really like stretching like this. You can see a little person evolving there. Um, you you don't want it to go the other way. So um, you don't want the stretch to go that way. You want it to go that way. Okay, so from side, from ear to ear, basically, and um, it's going to be a really tight. Um, fit so and you're going to have to sew a little tube so what you need to do is sort of measure your almost make the the piece to measure now i'm not a um I, i'm not a seamstress or um a dressmaker so i have everything with me is a bit more like improvised and not not that neat so i'll just give you a warning now if that really bothers you I'm, i do apologize and uh, so this is now i know this is my width and now i'm just going to cut along the grain of that fabric because that's the way that the grain runs um, for about maybe sort of 10 centimeters so just measure that yeah that'll do and then I cut across so it, I've got a, a rectangle or something of the kind there we go so now I'm going to um, sew this up now if you have used a heavy fabric a heavy quality then you will to will need to make sure that it's the right way around so you're sewing it on the wrong side and then you're turning it inside out but if it's the um if it's just the the, the lightweight which works better for those small dolls so i recommend you get that then it doesn't matter whether you are sewing it um wrong or right way around and you can see how imprecise my um sizing is but that's fine you need a sewing needle you need some matching thread um, we do sell the matching thread as well. Um, it's a, it, um, we're, we're usually quite purist, but for this particular thread, we are going for a nylon thread because there's nothing more annoying when you make a doll that the seams come open. And if you're, especially if you're making a doll that gets um, manhandled and played with, they do get quite a lot of um, wear and tear. 
So I'm doubling up my thread and now all I'm going to do is I sew along this seam in a back stitch. So I get my thread established first and and I'm not so worried about um, these bits here at the top and at the bottom. That's that, that, that doesn't bother me. It's um, it's fine. And so I'm sewing along this and whilst I'm sewing along you don't need to uh, see me sew because that's probably quite boring. Um, I will just show you what a backstitch is. So a backstitch basically is, is when you you um, go one stitch back and two forward. So you're working your way forward but slower than you would if you just kept going forward. So one back and one forward. D um, small stitches maybe with half um, a centimeter of seam allowance. And um, and remember, it's a stretchy fabric. If you've make, made it too big, it, it's not a big deal because you can uh, put another seam um, next to the one. It definitely needs to be a nice tight fit. So don't don't um, be lazy putting the extra seam on on there if you if you have made it too um, too big. Right, I'm going to go onto the big screen now because I can do this while I um, maybe, I don't know, can I sew while I watch? Maybe, oh, um, Jude says, I'm a replica of my mom. Well, it's really strange, isn't it? Because I can see my dad in me as well, which um, I don't know what I prefer, actually. Well, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just me. <laughs> I definitely think I've got more of my father's sort of traits, father's side traits trades in in the family but my mum was very very creative she was like I said she was a I've never never not seen her with knitting needles or crochet hook in her hand she was just constantly the the tons and tons of yarns she must have used um is is unbelievable seriously unbelievable and she she turned her hand to everything um whether it was um crocheting ginormous big um tablecloths or whether she was kitting kitting us children out from head to toe with um, knitted and crocheted garments, which was particularly cool in the 70s, all orange, green, and um, if you're lucky, you've got a bit of brown in there as well. Um, so, oh, lots of people are saying I look, um, I look like my mum. That's funny. I mean, it's not really funny. You, you, you think that somehow we've got a similarity. Oh, everybody's saying it. I can't believe it. That's hilarious. Um, I need to make a flat cap. Oh, yeah, no, I, I went, I've been, to, oh, gosh, here we go. Um, Pam, if you're still there, I need, seriously, I need some tips on how to read the comments um, so they all make sense. Do you bookmark them? Can you bookmark comments? Because I, I have no idea to do this. Um... Jude says, my other niece, who's a little older, is watching with me now and started making a Masha from Masha and the Bear. She demanded I tell you all of that too for a chance to win those colours of wool. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. You've been on um, on YouTube as well, so you can tell your um, niece that. Donna says, I'm doing someone in shorts. Would I just wrap the legs in flesh colour wool for lower legs that are below the shorts? That sounds like a good idea. Are you making a postman? Maybe. Um, Bridget says, I'm going to make my dad because he used to do all the voices when he read to me. Oh, <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, and Claire says, lovely, we'll have to get one. Thanks, Steffi. Oh, what, what, whatever that is. <laughs> no, I don't know what that refers to. Um, so when you get to the end of your little tube, which I, I've, I'm getting to now, you could go over it again. Um, you could even put a blanket stitch on, on the, um, um, around the edge if you if you were worried that the seam does come undone but I'm not so worried about this um, here because um, because there's going to be a lot of stuff added over the top so I've got my little tube here now I'm going to turn this I'm just going to go to the overhead camera again I'm going to turn this inside out so that's now my little tube and now I've got to fit this over the head and I'm going to do this so that the seam is at the back, as you may have guessed. So let's put this on there. Squish the head in. It will be a squish and it needs to be a squish because we want it to be nice and snug. Just need to swivel that around a bit, have that seam at the back. There. And um, 
yeah that's okay it could be a little bit tighter but um i think i think that will work i'm gonna put the head in sort of that it's midway so that 10 centimeter tube so you midway i've got a bit of end on either end and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to tie the base up because that is the um that is the bit that um where you need that extra strong thread so i'm going to go round and round and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to keep the chin area without wrinkles it's best to have the wrinkles at the back um, and then um, tie it up properly secure it with a knot and um, that's what you do first here so the extra strong thread will be good for this but it will also be good for the other part when we're making the other type of head and then you've got to sew up the top of this by um, folding it down over the back of the head as much as you can and um, and if you because you're covering the back um, of the head with hair well ideally you will have to so if you're making somebody bald that could be a problem um, maybe give them a um, I don't know a hat that covers their head so you you fold this over and then you fold it in so you don't have the seams and um, and then you just have to sew that to the back of the head so I'm going to do that now as well again it doesn't need to look pretty because it will be covered up um, so just remember that Get some there. more thread so I'm going to do that and um, and then I'll show you how to make the other style of head which requires no needle felting whatsoever. There. So I establish my um, thread again. Oh, that's a bit uneven. Let's level that out. There. And for this one, you're doing um, an invisible stitch. So I'm just going to get my thread established by going in and out a couple of times. And to do an invisible stitch is um, is so that you you catch a little bit of the fabric and then you catch a little bit of the opposite fabric and then you pull it really close so that um, pulls the seam together so you don't see the stitches and you're covering up a lot of this um, unsightfulness if you like. And you would just work your way around, keep it away from the forehead and the and the and the and the head itself. That's all you need to remember is to keep it away from these parts. If you're not um, a keen sewer, you might just have to bite the bullet and do it, um, because it is definitely worth using this stockinette fabric. It does, it does um, smooth the face in in a way that it's really hard to do needle felted. And um, and therefore you can make young faces and um, you can make them look very, very um, realistic because you can also color their cheeks and later with a bit of um, crayon. Um, it needs to be a non-oily crayon or you can use a, a colored pencil, which I've got at the ready for later, if we get that far. Oh, caught a bit of the... Right, so nearly done with this. And um, what I'm going to do is, because this one I, I started out with needle felting, so I'm going to finish with needle felting on, on the face as well. So I'm going to show you how to needle felt the features on. Um, get your medium or fine needle felting needle ready because you, um, you don't want to coarse needle for this. You have to felt into the fabric, so you need to get your needle felting needle um, to fit into the into the grain of the fabric right and I am just sewing that last bit away so this is it's not the prettiest thing but um, it's not not quite as Frankenstein either so and remember it's going to be completely hidden away later and if you want to go over it again you could but I'm just doing it um, once right there's the little little face now there she is um, if this doesn't look like the person you're making, don't despair because it's like I say, it's the accessorizing and, and everything else that you're doing that will add 
um, the details to it. Now I'll show you how to needle felt um, a little face onto there. For this you need the right color wool to um, for eyes and the mouth and even if you um, you might have different colors and you can mix them. You need tiny, tiny wisps. It's really, is it's really, really tiny amount. So whatever you sort of got knocking around, just um, take those. My mum definitely had, um, well, I don't think she had blue eyes, but they were more blue than anything else. So I'm going to just use my felting needle and I've, I'm using my um, twisted fine needle and I'm just very gently stabbing into um, the, the fabric here. So the, once you start committing to felting, you're very likely um, making tiny holes into the fabric. So don't um, don't suddenly decide, oh, you, I want to take it off because I don't like it there. Um, it, it can be quite hard to um, hide those little holes because you're in a, in a way piercing the fabric. So there's one eye and then do the other one. I'm not worried about... Um, putting eyebrows and eyelashes and all the rest in there at the moment this is this is just an um it is a very very stylized way of making a mini me and um, you can later on you can use some colored pencil pencils to give more um of a of a coloring to the face um definitely make sure the eyes are on the same level that helps to make the look the face look nice um So I've got two blue eyes. Oh dear, one is a bit higher than the other. Oh dear, sorry mom. Pull that down a bit there. There you go. So I've used my fine um, medium needle and then I'm going to give, a, it, it's about, it's it's making it really delicate. So um, don't, don't really don't give, unless, unless you're making somebody who has lots and lots of makeup. Mind you, my mum, she did have lots of 80s makeup on, which was like usually blue or green eyeshadow. And um, <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen sort of uh, little clips on YouTube about um, 80s makeup. It's hilarious. It really was like that. So they, they sort of suddenly stopped. It was There was nothing very... Um, there was no transition from makeup to no makeup. It was either there or not. There we go. Little mouth. That's it. And that's uh, basically her, her face done for now. And um, it will all be in the in the um, in the in the, the making of the um, accessories and the hair and everything else as well. There you go. Got a little head on a pipe cleaner now. Um, hi mom. That's the start of that. Right, let's have a um, a little look. I hope that um, the buffering is better now. It seems to be a little bit better quality. Well, it sort of keeps keeps coming and going, so I'm hoping it's okay. Um, uh, okay. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to get on. Um, I'm, I'm, I trust that um, Emma has got it all under control because I, I'm not hearing her saying anything. So what I'm going to do next is I show you how to make um, a head, but this time with um, a different um, in a different style. So we need a pipe cleaner again. Um, oh, I don't know why there's a knot on it. I want to take it from that pile. Right, got a pipe cleaner there, and. Um, it's basically very similar to how you started with the first one. You're going to wrap it with wool and then bend the top in. So the pipe cleaner, well, it's it's not just to get rid of this sharp end. It's also to, to stop the pipe cleaner from pulling out and wrap it up with your choice of uh, preferred core wool. And remember that if you want to um, win one of these hand hand carded designer bats designed by Steffi then you uh, need to tell us um, which which mini me you're making and why and when I've made this head then we are going to um, um, close the competition so once that head is complete I'll close the competition and um, oh I'm needle felting I said I wasn't going to needle felt okay so no needle felting this time just use the wool to make a really nice round ball the wool sort of if you've got 
a good core wool like like ours here it should stick to itself I saw in my nature to just get that felting needle out and needle felt um, and um, it looks a little bit more fluffy when you do it that way so um, again put another layer on because this time you're not actually squishing it down with um, by needle felting so if you haven't if you don't needle felt then this is the head for you and uh, what you need next is you need your little bit of cotton gauze so if you're buying this separately and not in the pack the Stolz house starter pack then you get it in a little glassing pack from us it is 1.5 centimeter wide and it is um, one meter long. Now for this, um, in the book it tells you exactly the measurements, but just if you don't have the book and you want to know how to do this, you basically you need enough to have a bit at the bottom, then at the top, and then you're going back on yourself. So you need to have um, quite a bit longer than you think that you need. So I'm just gonna cut this. And then all you're doing is you're putting this over the head a bit of a squishy squishy job put this over the head there squish the wool in have enough at the bottom so that you can tie that off later and then you twist the top because that's closing the top and then you go back on yourself so you need to open this up so that you can put it over the top again so make sure there's a twist that was probably a little bit too long, that one. Just shorten it a bit there. So make sure the twist is there because that is like closing it up at the top. And then you're going over the top um, again, pulling it down. And really do give it a good old pull so you really want to stuff the wool in there. Remember, it's not needle felted so it, it hasn't been in anywhere held together other than you wrapping it around the pipe cleaner. And then you want to um, get to the base here. So there you go. Take your extra strong thread, tie the base off as you did earlier with just the stockinette um, over the top of the wool. Put a knot on it. There. Oh, I've just realized I've, I've missing a tool done. I might have to just um, show you something else while I'm um, getting my crochet hook because you do need a crochet hook for this. So now I've got, um, it's a much softer head, um, no needle felting so far on this and whilst I'm doing this I'm just going to remind you of the um, competition that we are running. So you're making a mini me, if you've joined us late, you're making a mini me um, and um, up for grabs is a signed copy of the Making Soft Dolls book together with a gift voucher to spend on our shop, on our online shop. And um, I hope you can still hear me because I'm now crawled under the table getting a crochet hook. I'm coming back. Um, and there is a reason why we need a crochet hook. It's, it's, it, it, it's not because you need to crochet. Anyway, so you've got until the end of February to submit your entry on our Facebook page by showing us a photo of um, your mini-me plus the person you are you made the mini-me to represent. This can be maybe the person is holding the mini-me. It could also just be two images side by side. Right, got my crochet hook now. I'm going on to overhead camera again. So we've got, um, got my head here now. The reason why I need this crochet hook will be apparent in a minute. But now you're going to tie an eye line. Just need a bit of a longer, longer piece of that extra strong thread. And um, this is this is sort of this is the bit where where a lot of people find it quite hard. But I go, I'll, I'll show you. It is not as difficult as you think it is. So you are, again, this needs to be in the center of the head, and you're going round the head twice. So it is important that these are running parallel. So what you're not going to do is you're not going to go here and then twist the thread around each other and then go back. You don't do that. Okay, you are literally putting the thread around the head twice. So this is once and then twice and then you pull tight and then you tie um, a knot onto this. For this um, you could use what I think is called a surgical knot where you go through the loop twice, pull it tight because that will 
now hold itself without you having to put a finger on there. I haven't got, I haven't knotted this yet. And then you can um, tie uh, a knot over the, oh God, what a, what a terrible knot. But anyway, it's happening. There you go. There's a knot now. And now what you're going to do is you're going to sew these little um, ends into um, the side of the head where you imagine the ears to be. So you're going to the side of the head and sew the thread in like this, just a couple of times. This is just to secure the thread, but also you're um, you're putting you're stopping the um, the middle line from moving around. And um, you can come out at the other side if you want. That's not. Um, it's not so important here. It would be more important if you're making a large doll. I actually can't get to the other side, so I'm not going to bother. And you just cut that off. And then you do this on, repeat this on the opposite ear, so to speak. It's a bit of a longer thread. So into here. So make sure you go around that middle line that you've just tied. So that's not going to move back. Um, back or down. Got a knot in my thread. Did that get there? Come on. Sorry, I've got a knot in my thread, so I'm trying to force it through. Oh well, just cut that off. That will do. And um, now what you're going to do is, and this is what you need the crochet hook for, on the back of the head, so the where where you've knotted the initial initial one that's the that's the nose so to speak then you've got your two ears and on the back of the head you've got these two sides using a crochet hook and you pull one underneath the head yeah, and one on top of the head and that's one of the reasons why we are not um why we're not uh, why we're why we're tying um why we're sewing the ears on um well we're not sewing the ears on but we're sewing the thread to the side of the head so that it doesn't move um, over the head, um, over the face. So now what you've done is you have created a face with an eye line and the back of a head that hasn't got the eye line anymore because you've moved the back one over the top of that looks like through your fabric. So if you don't want to give it a nose and just have sort of quite a, a flat face, you can see you've got your eye line coming through. And then if you do want to give it a nose, you don't need to needle felt this either. You do, however, need a little bit of wool scrunch it up and then sew it into the center of the face where the eye line is. So um, for this you don't need to be able to needle felt at all. You just need to sew this on. Maybe I need a bit of a longer thread for this. Get some more. Um, Actually, that was a better sewing needle. There we go. Get this sewn on to the head. And um, and then it's basically the same what you did before, where you have to make your um, tube and sew it exactly as you did before. You sew the tube together and pull it over the head. So if you're just making one or the other um, head, then for both of them, you will need a pipe cleaner, your wool. Um, you will also need stockinette that you're sewing into the tube exactly as you did before. Now to make this nose more round, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go round it and tie it round in a minute. Again, you can, um, you know, you can uh, uh, look at it when you when you put the stockinette over the top. So. You re you're reducing the size of the nose by sewing into it rather than needle felting. You can needle felt it if you want to, but I'm just thought I'll show you one needle felted version and one non-needle felted version. So this is just sewn now. There we go. Um, and I am, what am I looking for? Okay, scissors, there. Cut that off. And now check again if you're happy with that with your stockinette. 
and um, your little face has got a nose now, okay? And then you um, do exactly what you did before. You use your stocking net. It's probably about the same width as I had before, about 10 centimeter long. Make it to measure and um, pull this. Have a little bit at the top, have a little bit at the bottom so that you can sew it in. So that's the 10 centimeters. And um, just measuring that here, around here. So I'm a complete, an, uh, I'm a terrible, terrible seamstress. I could never make anything fit. Um, I have to literally make everything. Um, I do I do it just as I go along. So if you are a seamstress and or a dressmaker, you will have nervous breakdowns watching me. And I do apologize. Okay. I'm just going to even that out a bit. Um, I'm really sorry about the quality of um, my Wi-Fi today. I have no idea why that is, but I'm just going to reduce the um, the output of the data a little bit more and see what happens. Okay. Right. Sorry about that. Right, so now we, um, I'm going to sew this tube up again with needle and thread as before. Exactly the same way as I've done it before. Um, you probably don't want to watch me do that again. So I'm going to go onto the big screen and um, have a check what um, amazing ideas everybody's coming up. And I'm really, I'm really so sorry that I am not able to read everybody's comment because it's... Um, it, there's just so much chatter going on. What I will say, however, is please do make sure that you give us the thumb ups on on the on the um, on the live stream. So um, if you're not subscribed yet, then um, maybe you want to subscribe to our channel. Tell your friends about it too, and um, that would be amazing if we get more subscribers. And um, just gonna go onto the large camera, and I will tell you a little bit else um, what's happening. So we've got. Um, we've got a, the new Makers Boxes out, out since yesterday. Some of you have been watching the live streams for the Makers Boxes, which was um, really lovely to introduce them. Um, we Our fairy box is the Amethyst. It's the birthstone is February. So if, if this is your, if this has a meaning to you, then you can make a little Amethyst fairy and she's hiding away here. She's actually holding a real Amethyst. So this is our subscription box for February 2021 with the fairies you can also just get a one-off box that's slightly different um, to our makers boxes the makers boxes makes a valley um, sheep and lamb this is this is the um, project that you can make from our makers box for this you need to subscribe your first box you get the tools and um, and then thereafter you can use the tools for the uh, future boxes it's um, it's none of our subscription boxes come with a contract. So we don't, we would hate to think that you have signed up and then you don't want to be signed up. That that would give me sleepless nights. I can promise you that. So we want you to be really happy that you're getting your boxes. So therefore you can cancel anytime and you can also skip payments. If you, if you have, um, um, have got a month where money is a bit tight or maybe you need to catch up or maybe you just don't like the project you're entitled to your opinion then you can skip boxes and um, and just rejoin when you're ready so you're in charge of your account the subscription boxes run um, from the first to the last day of each month and um, we've got a third subscription box which is um the surprise box last month's box if you if you did receive that was all about people and there were actually um, materials in there that would let you make a mini me in this of uh, in this fashion so um if if you suddenly remember ah yes i still got that and i haven't done anything with it then do um get that out and um and join us to make this remember you can watch re-watch the live stream on thursday at 7 p.m um, tomorrow evening, no, uh, yes, tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. we we will be restreaming the um, unwrapping of the um, of the subscription boxes. So if you want to see what's inside the subscription box, what do they look like, what can I expect, then that's a good time to join us tomorrow um, at 7 p.m. That's Wednesday, 
the um, 3rd of February. And um, we have got um, also, we've just run our very first ever um, virtual uh, retreat. And when if you want to come and uh, do that, that with us, you can do that too. And uh, I've got a little, a little, um, there you go. You can watch that for a minute and read the details yourself. And I'll show you what you can make. So if you see that Valley Lamon there, it is actually a lot larger than the one that you're making in the maker's box this month. It's a real, it's a life-size lamb. And um, we've had so much fun this weekend. And I can't wait to run um, the same retreat again in March. I um, I just want all the same people to come again as well. But of course, we will have new people. And, um, and that will be fun too. And um, we have... Um, 10 Zoom spaces, you can share a screen with somebody if you're in a bubble or in the same household or who knows what's happening in March. But um, um, we don't give more than 10 uh, Zoom spaces away because we want to be able to manage um, all of you and we don't want you, to, want you to disappear on our screens. And you get a big, big box of... Um, lovely lovely lush and luxurious uh, treats in there and if you need to find out um, what people have said who've just been on the retreat literally a couple of days ago then go onto our website there are some reviews already or just have a look at our Facebook page we have had um, some fantastic reviews and we're very grateful to the people who've left those wonderful reviews because we can't I actually struggled to put into words how amazing it was just just being somebody who was there and of course it was Emma and myself who um, were um, running the retreat. Right, there I've made another tube. So now this is, I'm gonna turn this inside out, um, same way as I did with the other one. I'm just gonna go onto the overview um, screen and I'm just very conscious that I'm getting um, definitely beyond the time, but I will just put this on. I'm not gonna repeat the sewing up of the head um, at the back but this is how far we're getting today and at least we've got made the two heads and um, and then what I do next time is I embroider the features onto it so there is a way of embroidering these on I don't want to overrun too much but at least I've got two heads um, ready to roll and the next time we're making the arms and legs so um, that's basically the two heads um, I would sew this on exactly how I did this one and then I um, I show you next time how to embroider the face on there and this is the cutoff time for the competition so Emma do your deeds and find out who is going to get these lush um I can't remember now which ones I can't remember now which two ones that's why I did the um did that at the very beginning whichever ones you're getting you're getting the ones that I showed you earlier I think it was um potentially these two and um and these two so um i i know that emma will remember so this is your your um amazing haul um if you win the competition today and um i'm hoping that emma will let us know in a minute who is the winner before i'm going to wave you goodbye so remember to give us the thumbs up if you haven't done so yet um the dolls are in the book if you enter our competition for the mini me you get a signed copy of the doll and uh, you get 15 pounds to spend on our shop as well there is there are some really lovely dolls in there so i'm just gonna flick through this book very quickly so you get a, a, an idea of um, what you can make and um, some of the dolls you've seen sitting oh i've gone, done the wrong screen again Oh, for goodness sake, I'm so sorry. Okay, there's, there's the doll book. You've missed half of it because I, I wasn't watching what I was doing. So um, we'll pick pick up other things here in, in, the, in the book, but I just simply cannot wait to see your mini-me's um, that are um, hopefully flooding our screens on, on our Facebook um, main page, and it's themakers.co.uk. And this is, of course, if you're watching live, in, in February, today's the 2nd of February 2021 and you can watch live again on Thursday this week which is the 4th of February 2021 at 7pm on our Facebook page. Thank you so much. The winner for today's comp competition on, on the Facebook, on the uh, live stream on YouTube is Meg. So well done, Meg. We will be posting these um, bats to you if you could just drop us a line um, on our email info at the makers with two s's.co.uk and um and then we'll get these out to you and well done
excellent. Right, everybody, totally overrun. Doll making is always so much longer. Stubbing a needle is so much faster. So um, I will say goodbye and I'll see you next week, same time, same place, and uh, stay safe until then. And now I'm allowed to put this screen up. Bye.